uh, uh, measurable in the sense that as you move the university forward, whether at the department level, at the university level, at the college level, it's important to have what you call a helicopter view and to understand the speed at which you're moving the university. That you don't have to do everything at the same time. If you want to move fast, then how much is going to be a big amount? If you want to move slower, how much is going to be a smaller amount? Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so it's very important. The third part is acceptable. It's very important to remember that in strategic planning, nothing happens without people. And many people forget that in strategy. It's what I said yesterday, what Jack Welch said when he uh, at GE. You know, you, put the, you take the wrong people off the bus, put the right people on the bus, and point the bus in the right direction. But it's critical that you get acceptance, either at the university level, or at the college level, or within every major of your faculty, both administrative as well as academic. That because we know from Japanese management that when you involve people, and that's why I'm saying that if you want to get this process, it'd be good to put a good strategic planning team together, and I can talk to you about that, you how to do that. And also for those people like our John Secretary, you know, as you, you work with different colleges, is going to be something important for you know a, in the AQ area, uh, quality control area. You know that you put teams. Don't try to do this by yourself. The secret of Japanese management has always been we take time to make decisions, but because we involve everybody, when we implement it, it's smoother and faster. Okay, remember that. So here, so acceptable in the sense of those people are going to implement it. Are they putting their two cents worth? And once everybody has agreed, now sometimes you have to push people, right? Like my dean, you asked that question yesterday, my dean had to push me with respect to assessment, but he saw something that I didn't see, that he believed that I could do it. I didn't believe I could do it, but he did. I used an example as we, I used yesterday. And the last part is realistic, right? What, what is the outcome? Is it challenging yet achievable? The reason I say that, because always remember, your, your strategy is taking you from where you are now to where you want to be. Where you are now to where you want to be, right? And where you want to be is your uh, vision. So you are in a sense going to break it into parts, right? You're going to break it into parts. But those chunks have to be realistic. You can't say, okay, we're going to go from 1,800 students, am I right, to 1,825 students next year. That's not progress. If you were to go, we go from, and my university is the same way. When I went there, it was 12,000 students. Now we're approaching 20,000 students, right? And my, my, my uh, president of my university, which is uh, early, same position like director, he wants to grow to 33,000, right? But, but the point is that it has, as you move forward, the objectives have to be to challenge people. There is a piece of research by Edwin Locke that says something very simple. And it's true in our personal life as well as it's true in your business, as well as it's true in universities. And he, this, if you don't remember anything about what I teach you today, remember this. Because the research, the empirical research behind this is extremely powerful. It is very robust across countries, many industries, for-profit, not-for-profit, including education. It says very simply this. It says, if you set challenging but realistic goals, objectives for yourself, you will always do better than if you set easy goals, objectives for yourself. Versa. So if you challenge yourself, but in a realistic way, you will always do better than if you set easy objectives for yourself. Right? Think of yourself when you're at the university. If you go like, into a class where I got a C, you go to Dr. Sinai's class and you go, I got a C. 
Then you need one of these finals, and now you have a D minus. All right? Whereas if you studied at an A level, maybe you wrote a tough final, yeah, now you have an A minus. Right? A minus is rather be better than an F. There's a lot of research to support that. It's true at your university too. Mm -hmm. Don't just take a status quo plus a minus step. Push yourself by the grace of Allah. So we'll come back to that. I just wanted you to see that. So we'll come back to that in a minute. So going from there, now what I want to talk about, we've talked about a lot of things. I, I, what I want to talk about is from, I'm skipping to this slide, the one right before that which is strategy implementation. Now, we've talked about strategic planning in detail. I know, I'm sorry, it's just we covered this whole thing in the past few days, so I'm not going to go over strategic planning again. This is Transparency 68. So today I'm going to focus primarily on implementation. Now, the book that I wrote on the board for all of you to read, and this is really important. If you are, especially at a high level in the university or a dean or a department head, this is a very good book for you to read. All my dear students have to read it. It's the best book on implementation. And uh, this book is called Execution. I wrote it before, but I'm writing it again. Execution, the discipline to get things done. And it's by Ram Charan and Larry Percy. And these guys are, this book is the best book. The best book. And I read a ton of books every year. And, and this is the best book in strategy, as well as leadership, for implementing a strategy. It'll show you what kind of questions to ask. Examples of, you'll take, uh, Larry Wesley was CEO of Honeywell, one of the Fortune uh, 500 or 1,000 in the United, in the world actually. And basically, probably the most successful turnaround CEO. So he can take an organization that's not doing well and turn it around. And you show you how to do it. And Ramtran is one of the top strategists in the world. So if you want to not implement strategy, read that book. It's not difficult, it's not theoretical, it's easy and it's practical. Okay? So when you talk about strategy implementation, the point that I made before is there are three macro level variables: structure, culture, and leadership. Organizational structure, organizational culture, organizational leadership. Last week I spent the whole week almost talking about leadership. You can also look at my other book on leadership from an Islamic perspective. And I talk about that a lot. I also published a lot in, in um, so you can look at journals like Journal of Management Studies published by Yale and EMBS and you will see that paper. So the basic idea here is you have to build an organization that is capable. At the end of the day, you're trying to in, in, enhance the organization's capacity. And when you build an organization's capacity, you're trying, you're working with the resources that you have. And if you don't have resources, then you have to go and find them. You have to go and build them. Now, Bosnia and Herzegovina is in a stage of resource and capacity building. Just as Turkey is to some degree, right? In some areas. So inshallah, I mean your your I see tremendous promise in your country. I really do. I think by the grace of Allah this university has has what it takes to become one of the best universities. Certainly in the Balkans and eventually maybe in the world. Okay? It'll take time, it'll take effort, right? But you have to work at it, right? So so building an organization capable of carrying out your strategy successfully. 
crafting a strategy supportive culture. Strategy and culture work hand in hand, right? Strategy and culture. You may decide you want to be innovative, but if the people in your organization are nine to five people who only do this and don't want to take risks, then you're not going to get anywhere. Apple itself, you know, I mean, look at the iPhone, right? When, when, when Steve Jobs went back to Apple, Apple was in trouble. Apple had, had met its first quarter loss under a CEO by the name of John Scott. And Steve Jobs had to change the culture of Apple. Steve Jobs had to change the culture of Apple. And it took him a while. Right? Similarly at IBM, and I worked with IBM for a few years under contract. At IBM was the same thing. IBM was dying when Lou Gerstner went there. And changed. first, they didn't have a vision. So you developed a vision for IBM. Then you changed the culture of the organization. And you wrote a book called uh, Who Says Elephants Can Dance? And within a couple of years, IBM went back to profitability and is now one of the most, it's a Fortune 100 company, one of the most profitable uh, high tech companies in the world. 